Hello, uh, welcome back to the live stream. So last time we added support for the um, ability to seamlessly call native functions from our interpreter. So all what uh, so all you need to do is declare the function with the special keyword seal of native, and then when we call it, we will automatically generate a trampoline function uh, like this one here, which does a bunch of translations and then calls the actual native apps function linked against the interpreter. So this calls into the uh, libc that, um, that is dynamically linked into the ex ex executable. Um, but note that we need to call, uh, like we need to specify sort of the wrong type signature, right? So we say that this uh, apps function returns and takes a short, even though like in actual libc, it takes and returns an int. This is because um, the, there's a type mismatch between the types as they're used in our interpreter and in libc. So in our interpreter, um, int is 64 bits, but in libc, uh, int is 32 bits, like on the native platform. Uh, so we need to pass 32-bit uh, ints, which is spelled short in our interpreter. So the first step for today is to, when we use the seal of native specifier, to translate the types um, into the proper version. So we can then say seed of native int, uh, and this will then actually mean like a 32-bit integer on the platform. Um, it's a bit confusing that um, those two functions return different types, right? This one returns a 64-bit integer, and this one will then return a 32-bit integer, um, but like that's probably fine. Um, so let's... Uh, so right now, um, when we compile that, apps is a function that takes a short and returns like 32 bits and returns 64 bits. And we want to change that um, so that it returns 32 bits instead. Um, so somewhere in the compiler, we are, have the, uh, we are passing a bunch of decal specifiers um, right here. And this one uh, is responsible for processing all the specifiers. And we've got seal of native that we are setting. Um, so let's also set in a flag to qualify the type. Uh, bool is native, which defaults to false. And then once we have the um, seal of native specifier, we set as native bool tool. And then we need to make um, this logic here even more ugly uh, by adding a bunch more branches in here. So it's native. Um, this mere is the type that corresponds to int. Um, oh, I mean, uh, what's the best way? For, so when we have like an int, we set it to a signed in 64. But if we're having a native specifier, then we want to set that to a different type. Um, so let's, instead of saying that this one is an int, like, like it's all about the base type. Yeah, it's going to be void char or int. So let's add an enum for that. Uh, enum base uh, base type, uh, which can be void char or int. And then instead of setting, we set the base type. Uh, like there's an enum class. And then set the base type properly. So, um, base type t int, uh, base type t char. Okay. Then, if you don't have a base type, we default to int, and then we need to enumerate over the base type. Uh, yes, so iterate over the base type. Um, if it's void, it's always void. That This is the same native or otherwise. Um, char is also the same native or otherwise, um, but int, is different. So if it's native, then int means signed in 32, otherwise 64 bits. Uh, is native C of built in 
I so a short then in 16 bit if native. And um, we also making having an extension for short short because when int is 64 bits and short is 32 bits, how do you spell 16 bits? You use short short. Um, let's just say short short and native means uh, 8 bits. Okay, and then the same logic for unsigned, but just with the corresponding new ints. And then we can get rid of this one because we're now iterating over the base tab. Um, the rest of the logic should be the same. So if we're having type qualifiers, then we're adding them. If we're having pointers, um, then we're adding them and so on. So that is fine. Um, and now when we run it, the apps function should now return uh, 32 bit instead of 64 bits. And it does. So now it returns 32 bits. And if I get rid of the seal of native, um, I can all now call it. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, apparently, really doesn't like that. Um, then it's uh, 64 bits again. So that's good. Um, now, ideally, the presence of the seal of native specifier here, uh, but also like propagate downloads to the parameters. Um, but that's not really possible because when we pass them, we don't get the type specifier at the end. Uh, but what we can do is um, add it separately here. Uh, right. Um, except that this one also sets the linkage. So when you have a seal of native, it set the linkage to seal of native. And I'm guessing um, the parameter is then parameters don't like linkage. Um, invalid use of storage class specifier. Uh, so uh, type spec is valid for parameter. We also allow linkage native. Um, so it's valid if you don't have a linkage or the linkage is seal of linkage native. And then that works, I think. Man, I should start factoring. Great. Uh, so now, uh, we can use seal of native as a type specifier um, to get the actual definition uh, of this thing. So this is now, we can now say it's exit and it takes a native int. Uh, and this will then be translated for us. Uh, so that's great. And that one still works. Okay. Uh, support seal of native as type specifier. Qualifier? Is it a specifier? Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, that. And now the next interesting thing is primitive types works fine. Right? We can take and return to primitive types. Um, more interesting are pointers. So let's say we want to call a function called puts, which returns a native int and takes a native pointer. And then when we want to call puts, hello world. So we got the correct uh, thing, but then we're crashing uh, when we call it. And the reason for that is that um, an address of a string literal in the VM um, isn't a pointer that can be directly passed over to the um, native code. So what we are passing here is an lauf address, which is like essentially an index into an array. And this index into the array is then interpreted by the native puts as a pointer, which it isn't. So it then crashes because it attempts to like uh, get that index. So we need to do a um, translation of the address that we pass in. Um, we get an address that is like the loaf address, and then we need to convert that into the actual native address before calling puts. Uh, so the first step is to, I guess, um, keep track that we're having a native pointer. Um, right? And then, yeah, uh, that seems sensible. 
So when we're having a pointer, uh, pointer type, um, let's add a flag. Bool, uh, I'm interesting what's going to. So I'm guessing the. I want. Uh, let's see how the information gets processed. So we've got. We're passing a declarator for a pointer declarator. Um, the pointer declarator then is combined with the um, decal specifiers. Um, wait, what's it? Where do we get a? Oh, we get an optional vector of those, um, which we are then turning into qualify. Oh, hang on. What are we actually passing here? Oh, right. Those those are those qualifiers um, so on the pointer, not on the base type. So we don't actually get the qualifiers on the base type. Um, this is only when we actually combine the ones right here. So here we combining the declarator with the type qualifiers um, right here. So this function, right? And this function gets a decal type. Uh, so let's, uh, right, which has a linkage. So we can check whether this is natively linked. Um, so get type, um, bool is native. So, uh, and it's native if the linkage is native. Uh, linkage, silo, linkage native. And if that's the case, um, then when we're creating a pointer, um, we are saying that, hey, you are, so we are creating a pointer type, um, which we potentially make qualifying. Uh, so yeah, this creates a pointer type and we can then say, uh, let's, let's just pass in is native Hello. So, bool is native, is native. So we just keep track of that flag. Bool is native, bool is native. Uh, returns to if we need to translate uh, this pointer into the native representation. Um, so that keeps track and then we can, um, when we dump a type, we should be able to then say if the pointer is native. Um, pointer type if it's native, then we say native, otherwise we say nothing. Okay, now we should have the necessary information. Oh, um, we need to, wasn't aware that this was a public function as native. Okay, and apparently we're calling it in a bunch of places. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I should. Remember, so it's native, decal, auto array, it's native. That one. Types, declarator, it's native. It's native. Okay. Uh -huh. So here we're cloning a type, so we also need to clone whether or not it's native.
uh, ties guarded is linkage, zero linkage native. <laughs> uh, same deal. Seal of linkage native. Here we're creating another pointer type. Um, if the expression has, yeah, expressions are never native. Um, expressions are never native, I think. Let's see. Creator, so we want to create a pointer to void for malloc, um, which is not native, because this is our own malloc. Um, that's like our built-in version, not the actual native one. Um, so when we take the address off, we are also never native. Uh, Whatever this is doing is probably also not native. Wait, no. This one. Oh, this one translates arrays into um, native ones. So this one actually can be native. So linkage, pseudo linkage. And finally, uh, same deal here. Linkage to the linkage native. Hopefully that's all. Yeah, so puts takes a native pointer to a construct. Um, that's great. I just realized that we probably need to um, type in. Hesha is equal right here. Um, we need to adjust you for pointers because they now have extra data that we need to account for when we do type interning. And likewise, then we also need to hash that. Hesha, hash scalar uh, pointer is native. Okay. But that should be that. So that was the easy part. We now know that when we're calling a function that it takes uh, may take a native pointer, um, which means that we need to do an adjustment during cogen. So we generate like a native trampoline. Um, right here. So here we're storing the pointer um, so to, in order to call a native function, we are storing all um, variables, all parameters, all, all, all arguments uh, are stored in memory by the appropriate type. And when we are storing a native pointer, we don't want to store it as a lauf address, but as the actual native representation of a pointer. So puts can then seamlessly access it. Um, so this happens right here where we are storing uh, the value of the parameter. Um, if the param decal, if it's a pointer, so uh, dryad node try cast seal of pointer type, the type of the parameter, if it's a pointer, that is native. So pointer and pointer is native. Um, then we need to dereference that, uh, like translate that pointer to the native representation. And uh, so we're calling a built-in for that, which we need to write. Um, let's call it um, translate pointer. Okay, we're already having a built-in called call native. Um, uh, translates the pointer. Uh, translates allow address into the native pointer representation. Uh, it takes one argument, which is the address, and returns one argument, which is the pointer. So, one time built in 
translate pointer. Um, one argument returns one. No special flags. Translate pointer. Okay, so the address is the argument that is on top of the stack. And we want to result uh, translate you into a native pointer by calling low runtime. Um, let's say we want to get a mutable pointer. Um, so you can only translate. Let's actually be as permissive as possible. So but when we're translating the um, uh, love address into a pointer, um, we need to specify whether we want um, a const pointer or a mutable pointer, um, or whether we want to, um, and how many bytes do we want to read out of it. And then love can do checks, right? Um, so if we, the memory is already deallocated, it does not allow the conversion. Or if you want to access more bytes than are available, we also don't uh, want to do the, do the conversion and so on. Um, but in our case, since we don't know what native code, like how many bytes native code is going to read out of it, um, we're just going to make it as permissive as possible. And if you're passing in an invalid pointer, then native code will crash, right? There isn't really a lot we can do there. So then we're dispatching after we did that translation. And now, uh, this might just work. Um, it does not. Okay, so we're panicking inside puts. Um, we're panicking inside puts, really. Um, oh, I think I know why we are panicking. Um, I just have a bug in the code and trampoline. Um, uh, yeah, we are translating the address of the local variable that we are writing into, not the actual value that we want. Okay, uh, so we just have the wrong argument order here. Hey, and now we can call puts. Right? This calls the native puts with, with a string literal that we are translated that we that we had created inside the VM. And it just works. That's amazing. Okay. Um, let's, to demonstrate what I meant earlier, um, if you pass in null pointer, uh, it will crash. Um, if we are passing in memory, cloud, malloc, four bytes, cloud, free memory, and then we're passing in memory. I don't have auto, this is C. Uh, then we're also crashing um, because we are we bypassed all the safety checks. Oh, actually, um, this one can actually be detected. Um, so we've got the because this one um, will return null pointer for memory that is already freed. Um, so if we don't have pointer, uh, then we can panic. Uh, love of built-in panic. I'm pretty sure it's called that one. A process invalid address. Uh, void pointer. And then we need to include the appropriate thing. Uh, so this one, right, we're catching this one. Um, since loaf knows when we are freeing memory, uh, but what it will not catch is when we do just give it a string that's not null terminated. Um, char array a b. Okay, it happens to be null terminated. Um, in on the stack, but um, I can give it like an empty array. It doesn't have. Yeah, anyways, like, you can imagine that this will work somehow. Let's commit that. Support translation for pointers as arguments to native function. Okay, so we can translate um, pointers when we are passing them into the function. 
what about pointers that are getting returned from the function? Um, this is a bit tricky. Um, so for starters, we can imagine that we want to call the actual malloc um, provided by the implementation. Um, silo native. Oh, I don't, don't, don't actually have the um, uh, text of 64 bit integrals, so let's just say it like that. Um, it would be like a seal of native long, but we don't have long at the moment. Um, so let's just write it. Um, and we want to call malloc. Uh, malloc, give me four bucks. Um, uh, let's make it correct. So let's please give me an int. And let's say that int is 11. Um, this one will crash. Um, it will crash because malloc returns a native address, uh, which we are then interpreting as an actual loaf address, which doesn't work. So we need to do the translation um, in the other way around as well. So we've got um, translate pointer. Let's rename that uh, translate uh, address to pointer. And let's also uh, add the inverts address to pointer. Uh, translates uh, native pointer back to a low address. So one time built in uh, translate pointer to address one one default translate pointer to address translate address to pointer. So we've got the pointer as argument, um, and we want to translate that into an address. Um, now we, the address in love, um, the actual representation of an address, um, consists of an allocation index and an offset within that allocation. Um, so if, for example, um, we call a native function that returns a pointer back into VM memory. Um, in principle, we could like check all allocations VM made to find that particular allocation where the pointer points to, uh, and then reconstruct allocation and offset ba based on that. Um, but that is quite slow, and I also do not expose an API to iterate over all allocations of a process at the moment. So we can't directly translate it back into the allocation it came from. Um, and also in the case of malloc, we're getting brand new memory that the VM doesn't know about. So let's just tell the VM that this piece of memory is just arbitrary memory that somebody else allocated for the VM. Um, this might be incorrect if it's like actually points to a subset of memory, and then we're sort of like getting like don't have all the safety guarantees. Um, but for now, it's uh, the best we can do. So. We are allocating a new address, um, runtime at static. So we're making it as permissive as possible. We are telling the VM, hey, this piece of memory, it's mutable, it lives forever, um, and it's essentially infinitely big. So this pointer um, lives forever and is infinitely big. And then we are just um, inserting that into the table and translating it that way. And this means that we um, don't have any of the safety guarantees. Um, like the interpreter doesn't can, can no longer track its lifetime. But it makes sense because it came from native code. Right? So now we just need to use that when we do the trampoline. Um, right here, so we want this one is translate address to pointer. And then for the return value, um, what we are getting here is we're calling the function and then we are right here. We need to do the translation for the return type, uh, decal type return type. So if it's a pointer, then we want to translate pointer back to address, pointer to address. Uh, huh? Inst call built of malloc, what? Missing, oh, okay, probably we messed something up in the stack. So we're calling, oh, um, uh, right here. So it's um, 
that's it. It's stored in the um, local return value. And when we load from that, then we do the translation um, in that order. Hey, and we've got memory, right? This is memory that is uh, dynamically allocated by the native system, um, which means that we also need to free it by the actual native thing. And we need the seal of native here is crucial, otherwise we won't get the translation. Um, free pointer. So we don't have a memory leak. And because we disabled all safety checks for that piece of memory, um, right, that one still works. Right, so we're now accessing memory that has been freed. Um, interesting pattern in there. Um, this is because um, if we, so in contrast, if we're calling the built in malloc and free, which actually do the sort of track, appropriate tracking, um, then we get a panic instead because they will allocate memory the interpreter knows about. Um, and so we can check whether it's still valid when we access it. But if you do native code, um, right, we, we don't really know that. Like um, the VM doesn't know that this invalidates the earlier static allocation, right? We could go to the trouble of like um, marking it somehow, but um, let's see. Okay. Um, let's like there is, um, let's do something different. Like there is um, Strustra or something, right? Um, uh, string string, uh, haystack needle returns a pointer. Okay. Um, let's try calling you. So seal of native, seal of native haystack needle. Um, let's say we've got the, um, haystack is hello, uh, needle is E, um, what are the actual, like, what do you return? Like it returns the position of that E within that string literal or something, right? Um, yeah, I'm guessing. Um, okay, haystack needle. So, uh, result is then first row haystack needle. And let's print that out. Uh, that crashes. That one also. So, apparently, you don't like that. Interesting. Um, anyways, let's commit that earlier and then debug that. Support pointer translation in return value of native function. Why are you crashing? Ah, we are crashing uh, inside Strasser, that's nice. Um, because needle, yeah, that's not a tra properly translated thing. Um, like that is an index. So this is still the love pointer. Um, okay, so first of all, we are printing function types incorrectly. Um, there's missing a comma in there, uh, but both are native. Um, let's fix that because otherwise, uh, like this will bug me. Um, so somewhere we are printing like functions and we are missing a comma when we do that. Uh, function deco. Okay, apparently we're not printing them at all. Uh, oh, maybe this is the function type. Let me print. Yeah, this is the function type. Uh, function type. Ah, right. Um, please give me commas. Uh, let's do first to if first. Okay. Uh, so now we're getting pointed, uh, commas. 
page printing of function types. Okay. But the thing is, um, we are having two native pointers and we are apparently not translating both of them properly. Um, so what do we do here by Twister? Um, so we're doing like, the printer doesn't know about our local function, so I'm assuming this is the trans function that translates stuff. And we're calling it for both values, so why are we not um, translating both of them properly? Coach and translate uh, address to pointer. Uh, so we're calling it once. Um, I'm assuming this is the... Okay, so we're calling it for the needle. Um, which appears to be correct. And then we're calling it again. But yeah, so we're doing... Well, we're translating both. So we're calling it twice. Um, so trampoline. And each one, like we're just calling them on stuff on the stack and we're storing them. So why by the point when we do the actual call to translate store, translate store, do the call? Are they not correct? Um, uh, so let's see what happens when we're actually inside this function. Um, okay, so we've got argument pointers. Uh, we should have like zero should be like hello. Um, oh, now this should be a pointer to something that stores hello, um, the way this one works. Yeah, so this is a pointer to hello. Um, okay, the second one is incorrect. Um, Oh, because this one only, so apparently it thinks that it only takes one argument, even though it clearly takes two. Um, okay. Uh, is the address correct? Uh, yeah, the address is correct. So we're calling strustra. Um, but it doesn't, the actual type, um, it thinks that it's doing something. So we, the bug is somewhere in here. Oh, uh, yeah, um, this one should be, uh, the actual number of parameters that we're passing to the function. Uh, and not just one. Okay. Let's see. So, what's result? Hello. Okay. So that one works. And um, if I do something like Let's say the needle comes from malloc. Uh, malloc one. Now uh, we need two bytes. Um, zero is e, and one is zero. And then we can use result, and then we're freeing the needle. And then we attempt to re uh, print result again. Um, okay. Uh, so this result points into memory that we just freed here. Um, it doesn't actually like over at the memory and free, so we don't see anything. But here we're using memory that has been freed, right? Oh no, uh, never mind. It points into the haystack, not into the needle. Um, 
So let's ah oh, that's annoying. Can I somehow let's let's do it like so. Um I just want to demonstrate the use of the free here. Um so do truth to um like so. So haystack is a local array. Yeah. So this one is dangerous code because we are getting a po returning a pointer to local memory. Um, why is that an incomplete object? That's a bug in the thing. Yeah. So um, this one is dangerous code because we're using memory of that has been freed, but yet it just works and does nothing. Um, this is because when we do the translation back to the pointer, uh, we've been lying to the interpreter and telling it that it lives forever, right? We're no longer keeping track of it. Um, if we do it um, naive, like if we don't do the translation, um, then we're getting a stack trace because we're checking against it. So this is a bit dangerous to call native code. Okay, a uh, fixed number of parameters in native call. Um, like I'm a bit confused why this one doesn't work. Like this is an unrelated compiler work, um, but it should be handled. Like if I do you, then you work. Yeah. So apparently when we initialize an array with a string literal, um, we are not handling it correctly. So, um, the parameters invalid use of incomplete object right here. Um, so if it's an array, uh, this is in parameters, this is not the thing, and this is when we pass a declaration of an array. Um, so if we're having somewhere we're doing right here, so if we're having an array, um, which has an initializer greater than zero, then uh, then we are setting it appropriately. What the initializer count sets here? Um, see of initializer count up. Ah, right. So an expression in it also has an initializer count of one uh, for those purposes, because we initialize it with a single thing. Yeah, it's just USD. Um, so now we should be able to Do that, yeah, and it just worked already. Okay, great. So, uh, fix um, char array initializer of incomplete type. Okay. Now I want to do, um, like, keep doing, like, implement a bit of a smarter pointer translation. Um, so, for example, here, when we do the translation from something back into a pointer, we are saying it, hey, this, like, we're not reading anything. Uh, but we're knowing that in this particular case, the function accepts a C string. So we can do validation that we're passing it, in fact, a C string, right? So if we're doing something like so, um, a, b, then we want a compiler error, uh, not a compiler, a runtime error, right? Because this is not an alternative string that we're passing over to bots. Um, so let's make it so C of native um, string, for example. And this means that the pointer um, that's expected uh, should be an alternated string. And then we can do the appropriate validation. So for that, we need to check when we do um, the pointer type instead of having like an is native, um, we want a more generic. Um, thing. Um, yeah, let's add just an enum for the native um, specifier. Um, let's make it somewhere here on the top. Uh, enum class native uh, specifier. Uh, let's make it none. Um, Default, what's the best way of uh, not default? Like it's just 
Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's just a non default uh, string, for example. Um, and then a pointer type, instead of a bool is native, we're getting like an um, uh, the specifier. Uh, native specifier native. Then we've got get type, which now instead of a boolean takes like a native specifier native. Get type native specifier. And then we are doing that. Uh, pointer native. Need to adjust this code here. <laughs> uh, all right, copying native. Uh, so we do with that. Then we are switching over the native specifier. Uh, print f native native string. Like so. Um, if we are having a pointer and pointer uh, native equal to C log native specifier default, then we do that. And then right here as well, uh, except with the return type. Turn type, uh, right. Um, then instead of type with specs, now also gets like a native specifier. C log native specifier native. Um, right here. Which we then pass along. Like every time we use it, let's do a global search on place here. Um, so if we're having dot link it, C log link it native, that just becomes dot native. Oh, right, uh, except for here. Uh, Here we're keeping that. Then we're creating a pointer type, C dot native none. C dot native none. C dot native none. Aha, uh -huh, this one didn't catch because it was on a different line. Right, and here we need to pass in the native thing, um, which we then need to pass appropriately. So instead of is native, um, C log native specifier native equal to um, C log native specifier none. And then it's native is true if, yeah, no, I don't need that one. Um, because I can then say here native specifier equal to seed of native specifier default. Uh, 
and we log an error if it's already set to something. Uh, and this is not called native specific, just native. And then right here um, is native. It's native if C native is not none. And it's native. Okay. Now this, if it finally compiles, um, shouldn't have changed anything because we need to hack in, right, we need to uh, add the new uh, keyboard as well. So, okay, we allow, uh, so somewhere with passing decal specifiers, uh, right here, so we've got uh, seal of native string, which maps to seal of native string, which maps to seal of native string, which we need to handle right here. Seal of native string, seal of native string. Uh-huh. And, right, uh, so then we need to do the proper translation. So when we are having a native specifier, else if, Pointer is not null. Native is seal of native specifier string and translate address to string. That's what we need to do instead. Um, and on the return value, um, we essentially don't need to do uh, we don't support it really for a string. Although, although, yeah, we can we can do it. Um, so if pointer is not null pointer and pointer native zero native specifier string, uh, then we translate a string to address because then we know how many bytes to um, to to translate. Uh, translate string. Uh, so. First of all, translate address to pointer uh, as above, but translates to a C string, to string, to string. Keep the chain in stack, and instead of calling get const pointer, we're calling get uh, string as a function get C string, uh, process address. And this will check that we're passing in a null terminated thing, which is the um, entire uh, point of that. Um, translate address to string, and then we do the one translate string to address, translate string to address, translate pointer to address, and instead of like we can figure out the size uh, by calling it and because it's a string. And then we now um, find out plus one. Uh, so you are like so. So you are string, and then we're translating you appropriately. Um, okay, so why does this one still work? Um, it's supposed to, so this is a native string, so we should be checking it. This is an array of size two, which is not um, a thing. So we've got memory, we've got a string.
Oh, okay. Um, so that's funny. Because this is a uh, local array, um, we do not support allocations for arrays. Um, so we are allocating eight bytes for it. Um, and then we will many bytes as zeros. So we need to uh, allocate exactly, like fill it with exactly eight. And now we're getting an invalid address. Um, because this is not a, like the other one happened to be an alternative string. So we didn't crash. Um, so that's good. Um, which is great. And if we are just calling uh, CLOG native directly, then we are doing like what expected, like we're passing it something that's not an alternative, so it continues on until it finally. So we can, can get a little bit of checking by using CLOG native string. Um, uh, if we go back to Stristro, uh, Stristro returns a string. Um, so it takes a string takes a string and it returns a string. So this one works. Um, but crucially, um, because right now we're just saying it, hey, this returns anything, it can be infinitely big. Um, so we can say that one is fine. Uh, because it returns whatever, and it just happens to be like no buts. If you just keep adding zeros, we will eventually crash. I think. Yeah. Uh, so this one's invalid. And by saying that Stristo actually returns a string, um, it will do bounce checking of that string. So now we're getting an address overflow instead. Uh, maybe that's an actual overflow. Um, no, okay. It's just the error message. So we can get a bit of checking. Now, of course, the advanced thing is to tell Tristo that the resulting address points within the same allocation as the first parameter. Um, but this would involve like adding some sort of region uh, lifetimes uh, annotation similar to Rust uh, to C, which is fun. Um, yeah, maybe it's something we can explore. But that's all uh, what I wanted to do. We made a lot of progress. We can do automatic translation of addresses. Uh, we can get basic checking back. Uh, yeah, so that's good. Uh, add clog native string to translate to C strings with bounce checking. Okay, uh, thanks to everybody who stopped by. I hope you enjoyed the stream and until next time.